This morning, I just want to kind of speak from you from the heart a little bit. It's not really the way that I would have, under normal circumstances, gotten a message. But I believe it's still always a message from the Lord, no matter what. And uh, I definitely believe that this is definitely a message from the Lord. But again, it came to me a little bit of a different way. I was, I woke up one morning. You know, we all go through things in life. And uh, many times, whenever we are going through things, uh, it can cause, tries to cause some unrest in our, in our inner man, yeah. in our soul. Uh, upon this life, the things that we go through and the things that we face can try to cause chaos and a lack of peace. Yeah. And I, and one of the mornings this week, I, I woke up really early and I couldn't really sleep and, and I kind of took off running and, and as I was running, I started to pray. And as I started to pray, the Holy Spirit started really to minister to my heart. And one of the things that was in my prayer was, Lord, lead me where you want me to go. Amen. Now, I got to tell you something. When I, when, I, when, I describe, when I pray that prayer, it, to, for me, it's not a physical location. It's not a geographical location. It's not as though I'm pretending I don't like Patterson, Louisiana. And so, Lord, lead me to Florida where the, where the sands are white. That's not, that's not what I mean when I pray that prayer. When I'm praying that prayer, I'm, I'm talking spiritually. Lord, bring me to the spiritual place where you desire for me to go. Because one of the things that I've learned about God since I've been serving him is that he knows a whole lot better where I need to be than I know for myself. I'm convinced of that, church. I don't know where you are in your life right now. You may not be completely on board with what I'm saying, but I'm here to tell you this morning, if you have chaos and a lack of peace in your life and you're looking towards other things to bring that happiness and that peace to you, I'm here to tell you that you came to the right place this morning because I need you to know that what you're looking for is what those kids were talking about. What you're looking for, amen, is resurrection life. And resurrection life only comes through the death of Jesus. That's it. There has to be a death to some things. Amen. As I was praying that prayer and I said, Lord, lead me where you want me to go, I could sense so strongly the voice of the Lord in my spirit, man. And you know one of the things that he showed me? Sometimes where I lead you is in the midst of a valley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how long you've been serving the Lord. I don't even know if that sounds right to you. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't come up here to start bashing a whole lot of other people, and I'm not going to sit here and start slinging off a bunch of names, but I'm telling you right now that the church world that we're in the midst of right now, they don't like preaching a whole lot about the fact that sometimes life is filled with valleys. Sometimes things don't go the way that you want them to go. And many times people formulate and fabricate their message in such a way that they Try to speak to what they believe people want to hear and what people want. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you this morning that that's not the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord is that you and I both know that sometimes on this Christian journey, there will be valleys that we will find ourselves in the midst of. And what am I going to do when I find myself in a valley? Yeah. You know, by the time the run and the prayer was over... The message that God had given me was resurrection life is new life. Mm -hmm. And many times, though, in that path, we wander through a valley. When we ask God to lead us, we often think of a mountaintop, right? Because God lives in heaven and we want to rise up and God is high and lifted up. But God does allow us to go through those valleys also. It's in the darkness of the valley that I have learned that I can see more clearly. Now, what I'm talking about, listen. I'm talking about perception. Yeah. I'm talking, able, talking about being able to see properly around me and being able to see God more clearly than what I could before. Because you see, before I was being driven by what I thought was what I needed, yeah. by what I thought mm -hmm. was what I wanted, by what the world Listen to me. I'm, I'm one of these preachers that I'm gonna, sometimes I'm going to probably poke you <laughs> not on purpose. I'm not trying to get you mad. But one of the things like, I, you know, let me just share a little bit about some of my past. The way that I was living my life in the past, I was being driven by the world system around me. Yeah. The world system, yeah. listen to me, if you didn't get a res revelation, let me give you a resurrection revelation of life. Yeah. The world around us is fallen and tainted with sin. Yeah. The music of the world was driving me in a particular direction and telling me which way I thought I wanted to go. And it was all about the party for me. Yeah. 
But the party that I was living in, what the message that the music that I was listening to was singing to me was a was a lifestyle of death. Right, right. Around every corner, I found myself in a valley, but there was no hope in that valley. Yeah. Because the valley just kept getting deeper and the valley just kept getting darker. Mm. But I'm here to tell you that God doesn't want to keep you in the valley. Amen. Mm. Amen. The Word of God says this, that Psalms 23, it, 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 uh, David wrote, and he says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Mm. For you are with me and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, sometimes when we find ourselves in the midst of a valley, see, we were saying, Lord, lead me where you want me to go. But son, don't you remember sometimes I lead you? Because when God said that to me, it wasn't like it was some new thing. It was just reminding. Yeah. Because I got to tell you, I've already been through some valleys since I've been a believer. Right, right. Don't you remember you're asking me to lead you where I want you to go. But do you not remember that sometimes the places that I lead you is through a valley? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is with you. Yes. If you are a child of God this morning, are you a child of God this morning? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is this. Oh, well, my mom and my daddy believed that God was real. My, my, my mom and my daddy believe what, what God nowadays you got to even ask what God's talking about. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Because nowadays it's like, oh man, don't come against that one over there. Don't come against that one over there. We're so politically correct that we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Right, right. But if Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. I don't really care what's politically correct. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the only way that you're going to have resurrection life. And I'll tell you something else. It's not Jesus and something else. Right. It's Amen. Jesus Amen. and what he did for us on the cross Amen. that produces resurrection life that gives you and I access to the hope of God yeah. and every other thing that our flesh and the desires of our heart is wanting is doing nothing more than leading us into a deeper, darker valley every step of the way. But when God lets you go through a valley, he's going, he's doing it for a purpose. Amen. Many times what I've learned about the valley is. Is that God allows us to go back into the valleys once we're a Christian and a believer. Because many times, even though we're, we've given our heart to the Lord. And I'm going to stop for a second and talk about that. But even though we've given our heart to the Lord, we're not really convinced that what we don't want was what we used to have. Mm -hmm. See, in order to be a true child of God, according to the Bible. You will have had to realize that you're not okay with God. Listen, they got people in churches all across the land and the deacon in the church and the preacher in the church too. Come on, and this is this preacher is far from perfect. But I'm trying to say the preacher and the deacon in the church, they talking about Jesus on Sunday and they're on the corner hanging out, drinking a, drinking a 40 on Monday and acting just like the world on Tuesday. And what I'm here to tell you is that the word of the Lord said, come out from amongst them, says the Lord. Be ye separate from what fellowship does light have with darkness. God has called his people to be separate Amen. from the world. Amen. Amen. The message of the world says, though, no, we can have both. Mm. We can have both. We can have a little bit of church time. We can have a little bit of world time. We'll mingle them all together and it's all going to be good. Yeah. That's not what the it's not what the word of the Lord says. Right. So in order for you to be a Christian this morning, you will have had to come to the realization through the preaching of the truth that you weren't okay. That's yeah. right. Yeah. No matter what anybody told you in the past, no matter what the devil's right. been trying to tell you in the present, because he will try to whisper lies in your ear, yeah. you are not okay outside of Christ. I'm not okay outside of Christ. I need Jesus. Right. And it's not okay for me to dabble with a little bit of the world and also to try to hold on to the Lord. No, I got to come to the realization that I'm not okay and the Holy Spirit will speak to me when the truth of the gospel is preached. Yeah. And when the truth of the gospel is preached and the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, the boy's right, you know, he's telling you the truth. Yeah. That you're not okay without Jesus. Then you know what happens? Then the gospel wants to tell you this. 
But you can be okay. You can be okay if you'll embrace the Jesus that died on the cross and rose again from the dead. What do you mean by embrace, preacher? To believe in your heart. Yeah. That the answer for your problems is the fact, the answer for your sin is the problem that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty of your sin. Yeah. And then, not, now I'm not talking about in your head. See, that's what your mom and your daddy taught you. My mom and my daddy believed that there was a God, and the God that they believed in was the one that sent Jesus. I'm talking about in your heart. Yeah. It becomes yours. Amen. And you say, I need you, God. And so, Jesus, I'm going to ask you to come into my heart. I'm going to invite you in this place. And whenever you invite Jesus into the house, all that other stuff got to start going. That's right. That's right. And the whole, when the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of your heart, when resurrection life enters into your heart, I'm here to tell you, Jesus does not want to live with all of that stuff that's still in there. Yeah. Oh, but the Bible says Jesus ate with sinners. That's right. Jesus ate with sinners. Yeah. Yes, Jesus did. spent time with sinners. But let me tell you something about Jesus. Mm. He wasn't over there doing what they were doing. Come on. Amen. Amen. Oh, don't make me break it down for you. Oh, well, they say he drank. Look, we, we ain't even got time to get into that. I'm here to tell you, Jesus ain't never got drunk. Amen. The word of God says that drunkenness is a sin. If Jesus would have got drunk, he would not have risen from the dead. Right. <laughs> because if it's a sin then that means he would have become the sinful one instead of the sinless one. And the wages of sin is death. And because he had no sin, death could not hold him down. When he died for the wages of sin, he died for your sin and he died for my sin. And the grave couldn't hold him down, brothers and sisters. And so he rose again on the third day. Glory to God. And so now that we all know what it means to be born again, I'm hoping right now you say it in your heart and in your head, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins and teach me your ways because it's that simple. It's just to call on the name of Jesus yes. and to invite him into this place and to ask him to have his way. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you something, valleys will get you in the place where you start wanting to call on the name of Jesus. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. That's for the believer. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know, in the valley, I've also learned this too, that sometimes even though we're in the valley and even though it's dark, you can go Google it later when you go home. Does grass ever grow in a valley? Yes. And I'll tell you, you will find some of the prettiest, greenest grass in a valley sometimes. <laughs> Even ones that have big old walls on the side of it. Boy, somehow the sun knows how to get in there. The right water, the right temperature. And boy, that grass just starts to grow. Because see, in the psalm, it also says this. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Yeah. One thing that he wants to provide for you is nourishment for your soul. Yeah. That's what grass is for. Because see, a shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd leads sheep. Mm -hmm. And sheep need grass. Yeah. And grass nourishes the heart of a sheep, the, the life of a sheep. Well, you and I, according to the Bible, if we're, if we're believers, are the sheep of God. And the nourishment that you need and that I need is nourishment for my soul. Yeah. Oh, but I don't understand the Bible when I read it. I don't really like the way the preacher's okay for the first 15 minutes, but after 25, it's just a little bit too long. And I like things done a certain way. And I want, I want the music to entertain me and all this other kind of stuff. I'm here to tell you what you need. What I need is nourishment for my soul. And all the enemy will fight against you tooth and nail to try to prevent you from getting nourishment. For your soul. Right, right. Oh, he wants to give you everything else that you want to make your soul happy. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you that the only thing that your soul is really going to yes, be happy Lord. is nourishment for the mm -hmm. Lord. So he wants to lead you in green pastures. And he wants to lead you beside still waters. You know one of the things about a still water? Have you ever been on a, on a canoe trip or a kayak trip? Maybe not. I know that I have been on a couple. Dude, if I had time to tell you the first canoe trip I went on, Isabella's back there, don't do it, Daddy. <laughs> She's shaking her hand, no. She said, don't do it. I'm not, because it takes too long to tell you this story. You wouldn't even believe it. You would not even believe this story if I told, you to, if I told it to you. The, the, the confusion and the chaos that happened in that little bitty valley where that little river was flowing and we were in canoes. 
If this was not the most spiritually created thing by God to show me something, and he showed me a lot of things through that episode, and, one, and, I, and I, can't even get in, I can't even get into it, but sometimes whenever we step out, and I'm not saying it was out of God's will to go on a canoe in a river. That's not what I'm trying to say. I can't really explain it to you properly. But what the Lord tried to show me was you stepped out into something where you didn't even know what you was getting yourself in. And let me tell you, it got rough. Hallelujah, the Lord was there, and he got us through. But what I'm trying to tell you is, is the main thing I want you to know is that sometimes in the midst of a river, in the midst of a valley, that the waters can be turbulent. What does turbulent mean? Messy. What, is, what, is, what are you talking about? Rough, chaotic, lacking peace. And then right around the corner... Amen. Still waters. Amen. It's the most amazing thing that you ever seen. You can have rapids here. You turn the corner. Still waters. Peace. Tranquility. Nothing but clap. I'm telling you, 20 minutes on a canoe trip could be a completely different scenario. Just turn the corner. Yeah. You, you, you were just now flailing and fighting for your life, watching your kids' heads going underwater, watching snakes swim in the water, climb up a tree where your mother-in-law's hanging on to the tree, and the snake's up there in the branch on top of her, <laughs> throwing his tongue out. How in the world is this happening? I watched this whole thing happen in, in real time. I'm not going to go any further. <laughs> and you turn the corner. Still waters, tranquility, sun shining, no wind blowing. The Lord wants to lead you beside still waters. See, still waters to me describe peace for my soul. Can you put Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, and we're going to look at verse 6 and 7 real quick. Still waters describe peace for my soul. Look at this. This is old King James, but he says, be careful for nothing. If you looked it up in the Greek, what it would be telling you is, don't be anxious. Mm, yeah. See, many times in today's society, people are plagued with anxiety. Right, right. Having panic attacks, plagued with anxiety. And the, what we're told by the world is, I got anxiety, so I got to take a Xanax. Mm. Wow. Not just wow. one, but two. Wow. And not swallow it, but chew. Yeah. No. And, and, and if I hit a little bit of, a little bit of a, a, a sip of beer with it, oh man, it makes my head just right. Mm. Well, how do you know so much to talk like that preacher? Uh, hello. hello. Come on now. I used to live in a place where there wasn't still waters, and that's what the right. world told me to right. do. Right. Right. And I'm here to tell you this morning that that is not what your soul is yes, looking sir. for. Your soul is looking for green grass and still waters, yes. the kind that only the Lord can lead you to. Amen. Amen. Don't be anxious for anything. See, many times we're living outside of the will of God. We don't have the Holy Ghost living in our heart. And we're anxious and we're having these panic attacks. And we think that the only way we're going to be able to get it right is to try to get our head right. And I'm here to tell you that that is not the will of the Lord. Don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, by prayer and really reaching out to God with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Look at the next verse. That's what I really wanted you to see because I'm talking about still waters. Next verse, verse 7 says, in the peace of God, rapids right here, turn the corner, tranquility, and the peace of God. Look at this. That passes all understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in other words, it doesn't make any sense. Right. When you look it up, it means it doesn't make any sense intellectually. Right. I can't logically or intellectually figure out what just happened right here. Right. But I was on rapids right here. And then I turned the corner, and now I'm experiencing peace and tranquility. I'm talking about the peace of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. that flows and brings life. Yes. The, yes. the peace of God, which passes all or surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds. How's he going to do that? Through Christ Jesus. Yes. That's how God's going to do that. He's going to keep your hearts and minds. Sometimes, do you feel like... Your mind, yeah. like you're losing your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever felt so frustrated in your, in your heart at that moment in time and anxious in your heart at that moment in time that you almost feel like you're about to lose it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you ever really kind of lost yes, it? Yeah. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, that's not God's will for you. That's right. That's right. But as long as we keep finding ourselves purposefully going in it. See, it's one thing when the Lord leads you in a valley. 
Can I get an amen? Amen. It's one thing when the Lord leads you into a valley because you prayed a prayer and you said, Lord, lead me where you want me to go. But it's a whole other animal when you put yourself in a valley. Yeah, yeah. I'm here to tell you that when the Lord puts you in a valley, he's got a purpose. He wants you to be able to see more clearly his love, his hope, amen. his promises for your life. Amen. Amen. I was, as I was sitting there running, I was like, this is, it was happening real time, fast though. I'm like, Lord, lead me where you want me to go. But you know that sometimes where I lead you is going to be in a valley. Yeah, Lord, but I've also learned this, that sometimes in the valley there's green grass. And sometimes in the valley there's still waters. And sometimes, Lord, in the valley, I find a lily. <laughs> sometimes in the valley I find a lily. See, there's an old church song that says, I found my lily in the valley. I wish I could sing it for you, but I just can't sing. I found my lily in the valley. A lily is a beautiful thing. A lily is a soft and a delicate thing. Amen. The scripture where that song comes from is Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. The song says, I found my lily in the valley. I found strength when I was born I think something yeah. like that <laughs> it's a place where I can trade my dark skies yes, into beaming rays yes, sir. of sunlight hallelujah. hallelujah in song of songs chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 this is really an old testament passage but it's describing as though Jesus were speaking to us and Jesus would say to you that I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Yeah, See, the daughters would be the bride of Jesus, which is you. That might make you feel weird if you're a manly man up in this place this morning. But I'm here to tell you, the Word of God says that the people of God are the bride of Christ. And He's the groomsman and we're the bride. Hallelujah. And there's coming a day when whenever, whenever we say yes to Jesus, it's like us saying yes to our earthly spouse. But there's coming a day that just as you had a reception, hallelujah, there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. When the Lord's going to call his people home and we're going to be with him for all glory and eternity. I hope that sounds good to you. I hope that sounds good to you, church. But just like a lily in a valley. Just like a lily among thorns. Thorns hurt. Thorns are rough. Thorns are jagged. They poke you. They cause pain in your life. But a lily is soft and delicate. It doesn't even make sense. How do the two go together? How are you going to find a lily in a valley whenever the sun doesn't really show, sh uh, shine quite right down there? Or, the, or the, there's not enough water? No, there's plenty of water. There's plenty of sunshine. The Lord knows how to cause lilies to grow in the midst of a valley. And the Lord knows how to take the pain of the thorns away. You know when a flower blooms, it's kind of like resurrection of new life? When a flower blooms, it's like resurrection of new life, a new life that will still have to experience an environment that is filled with the harsh thorns of sin. This world is fallen, church. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. And many times we find ourselves, even after we become believers, and we're like, man, I just keep drawing, getting drawn back into the same thing. I'm here to report to you from the battlefield of life that God can, that has our, Jesus has already died and purchase your victory and that if you and I will believe it by faith, it's not going to happen overnight. It's a process called life. But if you and I will begin to change the object of our mindset and change the object of our faith from what we've always known to what he's trying to teach us in his word, which is Jesus Christ and what he's already done for us, that there will be new resurrection power and life for you and I today, yes. tomorrow, yes. and the rest of our lives. We just got to get our head right, yes. and the way we're going to get our head right is to understand the word of the living God. That's it. Don't get frustrated let the devil lie to you and say, I don't <laughs> understand all this. You, everybody in this room didn't understand all this when we first got started. We need to work from the Lord to get us headed in the right direction. Listen, because this is the thing I want you to know. This world is falling. This world is full of sin. Some of the people closest to you are still full of sin. Yeah. And, and let me just say this. It's okay if you're a child of God 
and you desire to move closer to the will of God, that you got close family members around you that are trying to pull you away from God for you to let them know, hey, God's doing a work in my life. Mm -hmm. I want to live for Jesus. That's it. That's and if you're going to help follow me as I follow Jesus, then you're welcome to come along on this journey. Whether it go through valleys or mountaintops. <clears throat> but if everything you want to do is trying to try to pull me off the path, yeah. you may not have to say it like the preacher would say. <laughs> but if everything that you're going to do is going to be to try to pull me away from my walk with God, yeah. I'm going to be able to only spend limited amounts of time with yeah. Jesus. Right. Right. Is, is, that, is, that, is that rude? Oh, they're going to think it's probably yeah. rude. Because you know one of the things I've also learned in life? Ain't nobody likes it when you tell them anything about themselves. Mm -hmm. Even if you try to butter it up, make it real sweet. Mm -hmm. Anytime correction has to come into someone's life at all. I don't care how. Hey, man, look, I know that this is probably going to come across the wrong way. And I'm not trying to be offensive. But I really feel like the Lord would want me to say this to you. Even after all that, when you come back forth with the truth, something rises up on the inside of a spirit of pride. How dare him tell me. And when the whole time the Lord just wants to bring you. By you in your valley. Yeah. To some green grass. Amen. And to some still waters. So I want you to know that even in the midst of. Resurrection life. There's still going to be thorns upon this earth. But God can bring peace in the midst of chaos. Amen. I just want to tell you that. Because I might not see you again for a while. I might not ever see you again. I don't know. I want you to remember one thing that God can give you peace in the Amen. midst of turmoil. Right. Can you put Romans chapter 6 verses 5 through 6? Because we are talking about resurrection this morning. And I got to tell you that I'm excited about the fact that one day, even though physically there's a good chance that I will breathe my last breath. I mean, I believe the Lord's coming back soon. And I I'll, I'll hope that I'm here whenever I get raptured. Amen. Whenever the rapture takes place. I, I'd love to let gravity lose its hold. If I, hey, listen, I'm just trying to tell you right now, I done bungee jumped a few times and I love the way that feels. That's so exhilarating. But coming down, it got to be a whole lot better to shoot up. You ever been in an elevator when it shoots up? You know what I'm talking about? It, I mean, I'm just saying even physically, even though it's going to happen in the twinkling of an eye, it's going to have to be the most amazing thing that yes, you ever sir. felt. And then to be in glory after that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there's a good chance that I'll probably, I may breathe my last breath on this earth. But I got to tell you, so, so what I'm trying, the main point I'm trying to make is this, is that I look forward to a day when I'm going to experience physical resurrection in life. And one day when I breathe my last breath here, I'm going to breathe my first yeah, breath there. Yeah, and I will yeah. be in the presence of the Holy One of Israel. I will be able to, per se, look into the eyes of the lover of my soul. Yeah. He's the lover of your soul this morning. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily yeah. in the valley. He's the lily amongst the thorns. He laid his life down so that you could have life. He's the lover of your soul. You need to know that because the devil's going to try to do everything that he can to convince you that you're unworthy, to convince you that you're unclean, to convince you that you've gone too far this time, to convince you that God doesn't love you. And I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar. And when he whispers those things, you need to start to learn the word of God and what the word of God says Amen. about you and says for you. So I'm talking about resurrection life today, my friend, because that because I want to live for God in victory today. Why? Because I want to be a testimony for the goodness of God. I didn't been in the world. The world ain't got nothing for me. Yeah. I act like a fool when I'm in the world. Can I just be real with you? I, I'm not talking about you. I don't know what you do in the world. I'm telling you, I act like a fool in the world. I know sometimes my messages are PG-13, but I didn't I done been so messed up, I don't remember nothing. And then people start telling me, dude, you should have seen what you did last night. Wow. Yeah. And when I get off on all that stuff, I know I ain't nothing like a Christian. I was so dumb in the world one time, I didn't even have a license, and I'm over here driving a car, and I'm, I don't even really know how to drive. I'm a pilot. I'm like, dude, just drive. He got all kind of stuff in the trunk. Why that policeman didn't even open the trunk, I don't know. But your goofy... No count pastor got out of that car at not 18 years old with a bag of weed sticking out my pocket. <laughs> what, what, why are you even saying that? Because I'm trying to tell you that in the world I was dumb. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And sin made me dumber. Yeah. 
And whenever I'm all up in the world, I couldn't hide nothing. And what you saw was what you got. And I could care less whether you liked it. I was a mess, man. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm talking about resurrection life today because look at this. If we have indeed been planted together in the likeness of his death, did you know that when you get saved, the Bible teaches that in God's mind, you die with Jesus. The old man that you were that was born of Adam dies with Jesus and you are put in the grave with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. The word of God, the gospel teaches that when you get saved, the old man that you were that was bound by sin dies with yeah. Jesus, is yeah. buried with Jesus. And just like Jesus was raised to newness of life, you go from being an old man to a new man. You get to receive resurrection oh, life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at verse 6. Knowing this, our old man, there it is, is crucified with him that the body or the power of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth or from this day moving forward, we should not serve sin. You know what it means to be a servant? The idea in the, in the Greek is really to be a slave. <clears throat> to be a, Who wants to be a slave to anything? I don't want to be a slave to nothing. Right? right? I want to be free. I want to be able to walk in freedom and liberty. I don't want the enemy to tell me anything in my life of what I'm going to have to do. No. The only thing I got to do is live for the Lord by His grace. Because, see, I want my life to be a testimony, church. That's all I'm trying to tell you this morning. I, if I lived out there for the devil like that, and brought glory to the kingdom of darkness. And help people get messed up in the kingdom of darkness. I want to live for Jesus. Yes. For the rest of my life. Amen. And I hope that God would be willing to use me in such a way to help people be able to find that there is another way. That there is another life. And that you don't have to just live your life in misery and in sin as a slave in the physical realm. Till you breathe your last breath here and you take your first breath there. But your per first breath there isn't resurrection life. But instead it's the judgment of hell. And let me tell you something. There is a real hell. Jesus preached on it. He said where the worm doesn't die. And where the fire isn't quenched. Mm. Preachers don't want preaching no more. Because mm. they say, oh, people don't want to receive a Jesus like that. Let me tell you something. People don't want to receive a God like that. The God like that is this. He didn't send nobody to hell. Somebody told me that one time. Man, how are you going to live for a God that's going to send people to hell? I said, oh, no, sir, time out. Mm. Time out. God ain't sending nobody to hell. God sent a lamb. Yeah. He sent his son yeah. to die on a cross to pay the penalty for yeah. your sin. The reality of it is, is that you might have rejected that offer. Yeah. Yeah. And you might end up in a devil's hell. And when you're down there and you're being tormented, don't blame God for it. Because he sent the answer so that you wouldn't have to experience that eternal right. torment. Right. But instead right. you reject it. It won't be God's fault. That's right. Even though new life, the new life we've been given will have to be lived in a world of sin and thorns, the new life that we've been given should want to embrace the lily and not the thorns. Amen? Amen. Wouldn't you rather hold a lily than a thorn? Yeah. <laughs> have you ever plunged your hand into a thorn before? It is not a good feeling. The point to that is that the living don't stay in the places where the dead are. So if you're born again this morning, i got to tell you something. As a pastor, as a preacher, as an evangelist, or whatever the Lord has called me to be, a prophet, not a foretelling, but a foretelling. In other words, to tell you like it's written in the book, whether we like it or not. When you get saved and the Holy Spirit is living in your heart, He don't want you to keep on going back to the tomb. Yeah. He don't want you to keep on going back and hugging and coddling and loving on thorns. <laughs> Getting poked all the time and making yourself bleed in the wrong way. No, he wants you to stay away from that. Look at Luke chapter 24, verses 5 through 6. This is a resurrection verse. <laughs> Luke 24, 5 and 6. It says, And as they were afraid, because they saw that angel of light, they bowed their faces to the earth. They said unto them, This is what the angel said. 
Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee? He said, why are you, why are you coming around right here to this tomb? He's alive. Yeah. He don't, he's not in the places where the dead are anymore. You're looking in the wrong place for Jesus. Whenever the Lord put that scripture on my heart right there and I put it inside my iPad, you know what was speaking to me whenever I put that in there? I'm talking about for me and I hope that this can be for you also. I pray that my, my, I pray that would be my life. Whatever those things were that used to be the old Matt, I mean, most of y'all don't even know the old Matt except for the little pieces I tell you. People in Lafayette where I grew up, they knew the old Matt. I haven't had a whole lot of those people try to find me lately. And I mean, if they do, I'm, I got something for them. It's Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But I would pray that my life would look like that. That whatever those things used to be that were the old mat, that if people are hanging around and hoping to see that, that they would realize, I guess it's not the right place to look. Yeah. Ought to not be looking for the living amongst the dead. Amen. Now, that's a testimony of the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the enemy... And the sinful nature still tries to hold on to the best of us. Yeah, what I'm trying to tell you this morning is, is I'm trying to ask the Lord to clean all that up out of me. And that there would no longer be sinful and death on the inside of me. But that instead the Lord would replace it with resurrection life and hope. Amen. I'm closing with this. If y'all pass out the communion. We're going to take communion this morning. And I know Aaron, uh, Aaron's been given a special mission to go let Angie know. And then he'll probably help pass out some of that communion. But maybe we could get Manuel and uh, maybe Chris. Chris, could you help? And uh, we're going to take communion. And then Yvette's going to play us a song after. Because we're going to worship the Lord after we take communion. Amen. And so she's going to play us a special. And since it's Resurrection Sunday, I, she, I, she asked me. If I wanted to hear the song, and at the time I was like, Sister, I trust you, but now I kind of wish I would have just been led by the Lord like she was being led by the Lord, because then I would know exactly what kind of song we're about to listen to. <laughs> but I know one thing, it's going to be good, and we're going to worship the Lord. Amen? And I'm closing with this passage as they're passing out communion. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> so you are my shepherd Lord I don't know what tomorrow may bring or where I may be but I do know that you are my shepherd and I want to go where you want to lead yeah. amen. amen you are my shepherd Lord I don't know what tomorrow may hold or where tomorrow may bring me but I want to go where you want to lead yeah. is that your prayer this morning thank you